Hello. I have a true tale of the fire of a first crush and the cold shoulder of unrequited love. But before that, some background. I was born and raised in a tiny village in Ohio called Mount Gilead. It had a population of roughly 2,800 persons living in its 3.4 mile area in the year of my birth, 1983. To put that in perspective, the Fox Theater in Detroit seats 5,000 people. My parents are relatively religious persons, and as such, sent both my sister and I to a private Christian school. When I attended, it was a strictly elementary school and stopped at sixth grade. Attending a private school in an already tiny town meant I had less than 20 classmates in almost every grade. With classes being so small, pretty much Every student in your grade was your friend. Almost everyone went to everyone else's birthday party, and if you had a sleepover, pretty much all of your like-gendered classmates were invited. One such classmate was Luke Henry. As far as I was always concerned, he was the most popular student in our grade, possibly some other grades as well. He was traditionally good-looking, taller than most students, but not so tall that that was what he was known for had the best grades, got the lead roles in class plays, had good hair, excelled in gym class and extracurricular sports things, and was considered an excellent singer. You may be inclined to hate him already, but I was always envious of him. I considered him a friend, and we were always at each other's birthday parties, so it's not like he was a dick about his status. When we got to sixth grade, the number of students in our class had dwindled to four. Two boys and two girls. Those two boys were myself and Luke Henry. That meant I was, by default, the best friend of the most popular kid in school. As new best friends, we worked together on ideas to entertain ourselves. Luke always had a practical business sense about him, so many ideas were aimed at generating some pocket change. In order to amuse myself and find a use for the hundreds of crappy baseball cards I had, I began cutting out and taping cartoon character heads and captions onto the more common cards. Luke liked the idea and suggested we sell these cards. We started a little business called Comic Cards R Us. I made up a ton of cards, and Luke made a little flyer that we put up at school and local stores. We never sold a single card, but I still have my pencil box full of product. We also wrote a screenplay together. Well, we wrote what we called a screenplay, but was more like a story outline with some dialogue and a concept drawing for a poster. The script was for Home Alone 3 Lost in Tokyo. The poster featured the Home Alone logo and Godzilla, and I would love to show it to you along with the script, but we were so proud of that thing that we found the address for Fox Studios and mailed it to them. Needless to say, they didn't call us back. Our most famous creation which was the most relevant to my own artistic path, was the Jack and Steve Handy Show. Those familiar with 90s era Saturday Night Live likely recognize the name Jack Handy, and yes, that's exactly where I stole my character's name from, and no, our show didn't feature a single deep thought. The Jack and Steve Handy Show was pretty much what you expect two religious 6th grade boys from Ohio to make with a camcorder and too much free time. It's just us, sitting in my bedroom, playing with puppets and making terrible jokes while talking to an unseen audience. Also, there's a number of non-ironic home improvement references in the later episodes. That was sixth grade, our final year of private school. Both our parents decided to send us to the local public school for the rest of our school days. So when sixth grade began, Luke and I were now students of Mount Gilead Junior High. Which brings us to the main part of this story. Obviously, adolescence is an awkward time for everyone, and dealing with the culture shock of switching to a public school from a private one doesn't make it any easier. Going from a school where I literally knew every single student and teacher and lunch lady by name, to one where I knew almost nobody, but they all knew each other, meant I had to get over my fear of crowds and strangers really quick. Some of my old classmates from the Christian school had switched to the public school a year or two earlier. So that did ease the transition, and then I could just join their circle of friends. After getting adjusted to this new school, one of the first things I did was develop a crush on a girl. Being in seventh grade and 
generally shy, I obviously had no idea how dating or girlfriends or much of anything worked. I was too shy to ask anyone about how to go about expressing these new feelings, so it was up to me to figure out my own way of dealing with this. I took the tried, true, and traditional route of expressing my feelings in a letter. I looked up her family in the phone book to get her address, wrote her a letter where I claimed to be a fictional female cousin of myself, and explained my crush to her while including in the letter a quote from a teacher in a class we had together. I signed that letter as Teresa Collins and mailed it in pride. Much to my genuine surprise, I got a phone call a couple of days later from a friend of my crush. She explained why it was so painfully obvious to basically everybody who read that letter who had written it. The next day at school, everybody knew who I was and how I botched a confession of love. This was how junior high began for me. That's the mortifyingly embarrassing part, but the story doesn't entirely end there. My crush and I actually did become friends, and we talked often on the phone after school. She never flat out declined to date, but rather just kept saying we should be friends, and maybe someday we'd be closer. Undeterred, I hatched a new master plan to win her over completely. She had mentioned on a phone call that she had thought chia pets were neat and would like one. That December, I saved my allowance and spent nearly every dollar of it on a goddamn chia pet. This used up my entire Christmas gift fund. So, instead of real gifts, my parents received from me that year a set of Amoflame lighters and a log. Christmas break from school meant I couldn't give the present to her there, and I was too young to drive and too embarrassed to ask anyone to take me to meet her. So one winter day, as the snow drifted slowly over the roads, I hopped on my bike and rode to her house. As mentioned earlier, I'm from a small village. It's a farming community, and as such, many folks live out in the country surrounded by miles of fields. Riding my bike to deliver this present meant riding three miles in the snow to the middle of nowhere. This was before GPS, so I was going on a route uh, plotted on a map by myself. But I made it, damn it, and you bet your ass I made a goddamn impression riding my bike up that long, snow-covered driveway to deliver a surprise Christmas present to her in front of her mother and four siblings. It was a rare moment of triumph. Naturally, word spread amongst my classmates once more. However, it spread beyond the school walls and made it to my church youth group, a group led by my parents the same parents whom had forbidden me from riding my bike beyond the city limits and had recently received terrible Christmas gifts. So yeah, my bike was taken from me and I was grounded for a month. But it was all worth it, because I had to have left such a positive impression on this girl. She had to be willing to go out with me now, right? Especially when she learned I'd sacrifice a month of freedom for her? So I eventually got the courage up once more to ask her out. I even did it on the phone like a normal person. She said no. She had a boyfriend now. His name was Luke Henry.